John Lusk here of Lusk Archery Adventures. Series testing, successful hunting. Today I've got another bow test for you, and it's another bow by Sanlita. Uh, last year I tested uh, their their like entry level bow kit of the the Dragon X8, and then a few weeks ago I dropped a video of the the test of the new Dragon X9. That's also like a an inexpensive bow kit to get people started on bow hunting. And today I'm going to be testing their Dragon 10, and their Dragon 10 is their their, their more premier hunting compound bow. Okay, now I get a lot of people asking me, what in the world are you doing testing Sanlita bows? Okay, let me explain a little bit about it here. First of all, they're not a knockoff company. A lot of people assume they're just a knockoff company. This company uh, this is a pretty big archery company over in Asia and has been around for 20 years. They make very high-end target bows in Asia. They're based in China. And, uh, and they're very well respected. They've been a member of the ATA, the Archery Trade Association, for the last 10 years or so. But recently they've come out with packages that they're marketing to the US in kind of like hunting models of compound bows. And they, they come out at a really low price point. And that's the main reason that I'm testing them is I know there's a lot of people that want to get into archery but just can't afford the prices that they're seeing. And then I, I know there's people that can't get to a bow shop to get fitted and so forth. And so the advantage with Sanlita is you can just order stuff direct from their website. And I'll include a link in the description of this video right below the video and you can check it out. But you can order straight from the website. You get it in a couple days and it has all the adjustments that you can make right there at home. So it's pretty nice in that respect. And, and so I like it as an entry level bow for people just to get more people into, in, into the industry. People say, man, you're supporting China. I'm not supporting China, I'm supporting archery. You can make your own political decisions of what you want to invest in, but I just want to let people know what's out there and kind of how good it is to the best of, of my ability. So today I'm going to be testing this Dragon 10, okay? This is, uh, again, they're like their high end, their flagship, so to speak, hunting bow, but it comes in in the bear bow at $499, okay? So it's $499 for their flagship bow. Now you can get it as a bow kit for $699. And the bow kit includes a, a quiver, a detachable quiver. It includes a, a capture rest, a drop away rest. It looks really nice. I didn't have time to attach it here. It includes this stabilizer, pretty cool, flexible stabilizer there. And, uh, and then it includes uh, a sight. Okay, they have the, a three pin sight, not this one. I just put on this inexpensive one. I didn't have one of their sights, but it's a nice dovetail looking three pin sight. So you get all that for $6.99. It's a pretty sweet deal, okay? But, but the question is, you know, what about the bow itself? It, is this worth it? Is this a good value? You know, is it a bargain or is it a bust? Okay, so that's what I kind of want to test out here. And I'll just tell you uh, initially some of the, the, the information about the materials. The, uh, the, the riser is machined out of uh, aluminum, 6061 T6 aluminum, which is pretty standard for bows. And, uh, and the cams are also machined uh, and the modules out of a 6061 T6 aluminum. The axle to axle is 33 and a half inches. The brace height is 6.4 inches. So a fairly generous brace height that the longer uh, axle to axle and the, the more generous brace height give a little bit more forgiveness on the shot. It's got a hybrid cam system, kind of a cam and a half system that the, the top cam is a little different from uh, the bottom cam in its shape. And so they have the yokes right there uh, for tuning. It has the, uh, the, the peep sight and, and a D loop and so forth. So the bow comes in at five pounds of weight. Now I weighed it and I had already put this sight on it and it already has these, uh, these rubber dampeners. Now the dampeners already come on it, but I know when they weigh the bows, they don't count those dampeners. So mine came in at 5.26 pounds on my scale. So actually the five pounds is pretty accurate and not too bad. It comes in three different finishes. Um, it comes in in this uh, this grain called Wilderness. 
they have a desert gray, and then they have a, a black. And it's a really nice finish. It's got a little, little bit of tackiness to it, like so it doesn't just slide, you know, if you get sweaty. It's got this nice bridge that we know about uh, largely from Hoyt, but there's others that use that as well. You can carry it by that, but it provides more stabilization. And so, uh, oh, and then the, the, uh, the modules, it comes with two different modules based on your draw length. You have like a medium um, module, and then you have a large module module and they're adjustable like 27 let me look down here 27 to 30 inches and 30 to 32 inches for the medium and the large and then within that you can make adjustments to the draw length and you can make adjustments to uh, the the uh, the valley of the draw as well so it's a fairly adjustable just from home like that. And the strings and the cables are uh, BCY 452X. So those strings come from America. Okay, there's a little bit that comes from America, but it's a nice high quality string. The IBO speed is listed at 340 feet per second, and the let off is listed at 80%. Now that, that speed, obviously it's gonna change with the different draw lengths, the different modules that you use, as will the let off. But I wanna test it out, okay? Like it, it feels nice. Oh, I want to add to it has a really nice rubber grip. Okay. I like the rubber grip. I mean, it's, it's tacky, but it, um, you know, like it has a tack to it. It's, it's, it's sticky kind of, and, uh, doesn't slip and, uh, and it's got a really nice feel to it. Honestly, the whole bow just feels good. Okay. I gotta admit, it doesn't feel like, like junk. It feels like a good bow, but I want to test it out and see how the draw cycle is at my draw length. I have it set for 27 inches and I want to test out the speed and, uh, and then give some overall impressions to see what I think about this Dragon 10. Now I'm going to test the, the draw cycle a bit. I have this set at 27 inches and 62 pounds. Okay, that's very nice. It's got a, a nice back wall to it. Fairly smooth draw. It has a short valley and it's pretty close to the end, but then it, uh, so that gives it a hump but then it, it, it comes out nicely. Holds on target very well. And the letdown is just right. Now I adjusted that letdown. You have a simple adjustment that you can make to uh, adjust the length of the valley and, and when it lets down. When I did it the way they said, like both were set for the 27 inches, man, it really pulled away from me. Okay, I didn't like it, but I changed the valley a little bit and that gave me a little bit more uh, of, of a distance there in the valley, a little bit more length, and I like that. So it doesn't just pull away from me. I have a little bit of give when I let it down, but that's nice that you can adjust it to what you want there. But I will say the reason I have it set at 62 pounds is I initially had it set all the way down. You can see how much the, the limb bolts are pulled out there. I had it set at 70, and I could barely pull it back. I'm like, like, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I typically shoot a bow up more than 70 pounds, but, but man, I could barely pull it back. It has really stout cams. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. That's where it generates its speed. You get a little bit more generous brace height to it, and it's generating a lot of speed. So I'm eager to see how the speed actually comes out because with that kind of a, of a cam and that kind of a draw, I'm thinking it's going to be pretty good. But this at 62 pounds feels about like my, my Bowtech at 68 or 70 pounds. So, you know, I did have to drop it down uh, a bit to be able to get it to my comfort zone. So it's right at 253, 254 feet per second. And again, that's with a 500 grain arrow, uh, 62 pounds of draw and 27 inches of draw. That's pretty fast. Now I'm gonna shoot some three shot groups at 25 yards and I'll have to be adjusting the sight a bit as I go. So what do you think? You know, as for my thoughts about this bow, I, I was impressed, okay? Now, I haven't shot it like hundreds of times. I don't know what's gonna happen uh, over time with it. They do have a decent warranty, Senlita does. What I liked about it, I like the finish, I like the feel of the accessories, I like the feel of the bow, I like the specs. 
with uh, with with the length and uh, and the and the grip and the brace height, all of that, the ease of adjustment at home. I really like that. That the modules that you can adjust the, the draw length and pretty simple adjustment within 27 to 30, 30 to 32, being able to adjust the valley like that. Those are all things I really like. What I did not like about it was. I, I didn't like the draw when I first tried it. Like I said earlier, at 70 pounds, man, it was a beast to draw. Like, I couldn't draw it at first. I had to really crank to try to draw it back, and I thought, something's wrong with it. Is this like the 90-pound bow or something? Because I pull back bows that are 75 pounds, and I'm telling you, I could barely pull this. But when I lowered it down to 62, okay, well then, you know, it's smooth. Actually, the 62 felt like the 68 or 70 of my Bowtex. But then what I was really impressed with was the speed at 62 pounds was about the speed that I get at 62 or 70 with the Bowtech. And that's what, that's what really surprised me. So that was kind of nice that I could shoot it at 62 pounds and still generate the speed. You saw it, I'm shooting a 500 grain arrow and getting 253, 254 feet per second. That's like what I get with an SR6 with that heavy of an arrow at 27 inches. So that was really impressive. Love the speed. It was quiet on the release, pretty average amongst the bow companies. Again, the feel was really great. The accuracy, I was really impressed with. I shot the Dragon X9 and it was a challenge to get, you know, a decent group at 25 yards. But with this, it was just, I mean, boom, boom, boom. I'm just popping them in there. I had to adjust the sights and so forth and wasn't super sighted in, but the grouping was really good. Um, so there's a lot to really like about it. Now, one thing they also uh, have that I should mention is they have a higher end arrow for a lower price. So they make these uh, these arrows that are uh, have a straightness of 0 0.001 inches and, and they're 100% carbon. They're a 24T. 100% carbon, so really nice carbon. They come fletched with uh, with blazer veins. They have a knock. I'm not a big fan of their knocks, but but I mean a really nice arrow again for a lower price. So you know they're really coming out with some stuff that's worth checking out. But I want to make this clear. Like I love the local bow shop, and you're not going to get these in a local bow shop. But you're not going to get the the fitting and the expertise and the help and the setup and the tuning at the local bow shop, or if you get one of these, you, you know, the local bow shop offers all that expertise. So if you're like in a place where you can't go into the bow shop or you really want a lower end bow that, that, that functions like a higher end bow, this is something worth checking out if you're really shaving your dollars. But if you have the money, to afford a more higher end bow, like one of the flagship bows of one of the top companies or last year's flagship bow of one of the top companies. You can get those at a local bow shop and I think that's the way to go if you can afford it. But then the price point for those is like $1,100, $1,200 plus dollars to get you know this year's flagship bows. This again is $499 just uh, with the bare bow, $699 with everything else. So I, I think it has its niche, okay? it's I would say it's better than the lower end bows of the bigger companies. Just from my limited testing, I like it a bit more, but I wouldn't say it's quite of the quality of the higher end bows, but it's really close to the, to the flagship bows of the high end companies. I would say it's close and it's worth consideration, again, based on your price point and based on where you live in your geography. So check it out. You can check out the link. I'll put it in the description right below this video. Go to San Lita and see if it might be a good fit for you. And if you have any questions about it, just feel free to shoot me a message here in, uh, in the YouTube comment section. <laughs>